So my library had another fill a tote bag sale. there is Mitzi welcome to my channel today I want to talk about the books that I picked up at the latest library sale at my local library they had one of those fill your bag sale and so <laughs> of course I had to fill up the bag and this is actually not all of them there were a bunch of these were Christmas books and so that is going to be in a separate um, video because I actually ordered some Christmas books so I'm going to do sort of a Christmas book haul that's going to come a little bit later so some of the books are not even in here because I had it filled to the top and so uh, some of those books I had to take out because I'm going to share those in a separate video and I also have a stack of books over here that I want to talk about that I picked up at a thrift store and then one I picked up because of you so let's get started in this bag Let's see what all we have in here. We have um, Lizzie and the Lost Baby by Cheryl Blackford. Now, I have no idea what this is. I thought that it looked beautiful. Uh, my son was with me, and he picked this up. And he said, okay, put this in your bag because I know you're going to love it. He could tell by the cover that I would be interested, and he's right. I don't know anything about it. I think that it is a World War II story. Yes, World War II and look at that cover. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And right at the top, it says, Courage Comes in All Sizes. So I was definitely interested in that one. Now, this is a book that I had years ago when I taught school. And let me just tell you a little story about this. It's Ira, Ira Sleeps Over by Bernard Weber. This book was the first, my first lesson that I taught to a classroom in first grade. I had to do, when I... I went to school for um, elementary education was what I majored in. And then um, when I, when you get to a certain point in your degree, earning your degree, you have to go into the classroom and start teaching lessons. Well, they don't let you just have a class to begin with. So each semester you would have like one class that you would kind of shadow and you would go to the class every week and you just had to get so many hours in the classroom helping the teacher and during that semester, at some point, you had to teach a lesson. And that teacher who was over that class would kind of grade you on how you did on the lesson. So for that particular uh, class, I knew the teacher. I already I was familiar with her. And she was a great teacher, by the way. And she taught first grade. And so she asked me, you know, to do a lesson for, I can't even remember what the, what the lesson was even about. But I always did read alouds for every lesson I taught like that because it just made it easy because you, you know I love books. And so I had found this little book and I loved it so much, Ira Sleeps Over. And so I used this book to teach whatever lesson it was that I was teaching. I read it aloud to introduce the lesson, and then it went from there. So this really does have a special place in my heart because it was my first lesson, official lesson, in front of a real classroom of children, little first graders. And they loved the book too, and so it was a hit, and it was a hit with me. Now, I had a copy of this book for a long time. I left it in the classroom library when I... Uh, you know, quit teaching. I left it there. And so when I saw it and it was fill a bag, I had to get another copy because I've actually thought about this book several times lately wanting to reread it. So when I saw a copy, I just had to pick it up. Have you read Ira Sleeps Over? If you haven't, it is the cutest thing. It's about this little boy who is going to have a sleepover with his friend, but he has a teddy bear that he can't sleep without. And so it's like, well, his, I think it's his sister asking, you know, have you thought about your, your teddy bear? And what is your, um, are you taking your teddy bear along? And he says, taking my teddy bear along to my friend's house? Are you kidding? That's the silliest thing I've, I've ever heard. And then he starts worrying because he wants to take his teddy bear along. So th there's this whole thing of, you know, courage and uh, sleeping over at someone's house and it being different and leaving his teddy bear behind. And it ends in a, a really cute, surprising way. So I highly recommend Ira Sleeps Over. Your library probably has this because it's a pretty popular little picture book. That was a lot to say over that one little book, but anyway, it's precious. And then I picked up a Ray Bradbury. As you know, uh, I have a little buddy reading group 
Art and Alice, uh, they are reading through a lot of Ray Bradbury with me. Now, Art's read all the <laughs> Ray Bradbury pretty much, but Alice and I are discovering a lot more Bradbury than we had discovered. Uh, you know, I had read a couple of Bradbury books in the past, but not, I mean, he has a lot, tons of short stories and things. So this was one, I have never seen a copy of this anywhere, and it's Farewell Summer. I, I've heard of it, but I've never seen a copy, and I immediately thought, okay, it was worth the library sale to find this book. So I'm super excited that they had this discarded library book for, uh, to add to my Ray Bradbury collection. I also found an Agatha Christie. You never see Agatha Christie discarded. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But this is Ordeal by Innocence. I think I have a copy of Ordeal by Innocence. But if it's in these little paperbacks, these vintage paperbacks, I don't care. I want it. I want every Agatha Christie I can find. And don't judge me <laughs> for being a hoarder. But I love having the whole collection. When you fall in love with an author like Agatha Christie, you just love to see all the different editions, the way that different eras have, um, you know, did different covers and how they perceive that story. I just find that to be interesting. And so I always pick these up because I never can find them. So when I do, I am super excited. Oh, so these are Agatha Christie too. So I have Ordeal by Innocence. This one is a super cool, it says it was 25 cents when it came out. Hickory Dickory Death. Love that cover. I don't know if you can see that. And then Murder at Hazelmore. Now I have this Oh, I love the back. I didn't even see this. I think mine's called the Sitterford Mystery, but it's the the Sitterford Mystery, I think is what it was called in the U.S. Look at that, though. That's kind of a map of the area. Love that. But I think in the U.K. it's called Murder at Hazelmore or vice versa. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, I do have a copy of the Sitterford Mystery, but I didn't have one with the title Murder at Hazelmore. So I'm excited for those three little uh, paperbacks. I found another Ellen Montgomery, and that is Anne of Ingleside. I don't have them in this uh, copy. I No, I had them years ago, some of them, but they were falling apart. But this one's in really good shape, so I liked the cover of that one. And she does have sleeves, so I could use this, <laughs> actually, for one of the prompts for the More Montgomery Challenge this month. And then I found a few more M.C. Beaton books, Agatha Raisin Mystery, The Witch's Tree, the Dead Ringer, A Spoonful of Poison. I guess I'm showing these. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that. My face is in the way. And There Goes the Bride. I love the cover of that with him on the top of the cake. And then I also found some others that really seemed interesting to me because they have to do with quilts. And I, I don't know what it is about. If there's a quilt, I think this book's going to be cozy. <laughs> so uh, I think about that with the Elm Creek quilt series that I am um, reading right now. It's just cozy, you know, heartwarming and cozy. So when I see a quilt, I always want to pick it up. And this is the Patchwork Mysteries, Secret in the Stitches. And then they had another one that's called Squared Away. Now, I don't know anything about this. I'm not sure if I need to read these in a particular order. I don't think I do because it looks like, when I looked this up, it looked like each one of these books was by a different author. So probably not, but let me know if you've read this, if I do need to read those in order. But I just love the covers. It does look like a cozy mystery, and I love cozy mysteries. And then finally, The Graves, A Fine and Private Place by Alan Bradley. I didn't have this one. I have the first, I think, three in this collection. I know there's a lot of them, and so I'm gradually trying to collect these, too. So those are the books that I found at the library sale, and now I have a few others that I want to talk about that I found at a thrift store. So hold on and let me grab those. Now this first one I ordered because one of you sent me the second book, the sequel to this, and you said you cannot read that until you read The Fairy Tale Girl. And so I decided I am chomping at the bit to read one of these Susan Branch books. <laughs> and so I went ahead and I found this on eBay. And it, it was not much. And it is in great shape. 
even though it's a used copy, you never know when you grab these things off of eBay. But it's in great shape. But this is a hefty book. But it's by Susan Branch. It's the Fairy Tale Girl. One of you sent me the other book, and it's on my book cart. And I keep thinking, if I spin the wheel and it picks that book, I can't read it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one so that I can read that sequel because when you gift me a book I really want to get to it so I picked this up for that reason but this wasn't at the thrift store I actually ordered this off of eBay and then one of my pastors at my church they are the sweetest and he was at some sort of sale and they had like if you buy a book you get one free or something and he knows that I'm trying to read through Shakespeare so he found this sweet little uh, copy <clears throat> and it's the Merchant of Venice and inside is actually like a textbook of chart. So apparently this was like one of those classroom editions of The Merchant of Venice. So I was pleased to get this because I am trying to read through Shakespeare. If you follow my channel, you know that I love Daphne du Maurier. I already had this book, but I didn't have one with the dust jacket. And I love the dust jacket on this. This is The Flight of the Falcon. Again, I do have just the book you know, without a, a dust jacket. But because it was like a dollar, I was like, I'm going to get it so that I can have the dust jacket on it too. And then I love, this is an ex-library book. <clears throat> These were at a thrift store. The Swiss Family Robinson. I loved this copy. Look how pretty that is. So I was excited for that. And it is in great shape. Even though it is an ex-library book, it's in great shape. So I was it's a very hefty little book. So I was excited for that. I also found another Edith Wharton. I have only read one or two Edith Whartons. I have not read The House of Mirth, but it was one of the penguins. And I like these little penguin, black and white penguin classics. So anytime I see these, I you know, I gravitate toward them. When I see these spines or this little band right here, this black and white band, I always look to see what it is because I do enjoy reading these. I think this was 25 cents and I have not read this one, so I will give it a try. Again, if you have read any of these, let me know. This one just looked very interesting. It has, it looks like Jane Eyre, y'all. It really does. It's called The Sutburys by Pamela Hill. But look at that. Does that not, see the castle kind of the house behind. Does that not look like Mr. Rochester with the, his house, his estate behind him? I think that looks like a Jane Eyre. And so I said, it has to be that kind of story. It's not very long, but I'm super interested. Let me know if you've read this because this has really piqued my curiosity. When I saw that cover, I thought, Either they're trying to play on Jane Eyre or trying to get me to buy it thinking that if you're a Jane Eyre fan, you might be interested because that's what that looks like to me. Now, the next three, I have a feeling that one of you have, has read this. So let me know in the comments what you think of this. But when I looked at the cover, I thought, ooh, this looks like something I would be interested in. But these books are hefty. It's a series. And look how, I mean, that, <laughs> they're chunky. But this series is by R.F. Delderfield. And when I was reading the back, it said that he was like a more modern version of Anthony Trollope. So, of course, that piqued my interest because I love Victorian literature. So, I had to pick these up. This one is God is an Englishman. I think this is the first one. And then you we have Give Us This Day. I love the cover of that. Sorry, it's got this shiny on it. And this is the final volume of the saga. So, this is the final. And this must be the middle one. Theirs was the kingdom. Theirs was the kingdom. And so I don't know anything about these, but they are hefty, so that will take me a little time. Let me know, though. I was interested. I mean, the covers are gorgeous, and they're in great shape. But let me know if you've read R.F. Delderfield, because I've never heard of R.F. Delderfield. Maybe I have. Maybe I've, uh, you know, heard about some film adaptation and not know that he wrote that or she, I think it's a he. And what I made me interested was when I read that it was similar to Anthony Trollope's writing. So let me know if you've read it and if you agree with that statement. So those are the books that I picked up at the latest library sale and of course my local thrift store. I really have a good time at these book sales. <laughs> So let me know if you've read any of these. Are you interested in my thoughts on any of these? Let me know in the comments so we can chat there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.